All right, guys, so we're here at Extreme MMA. Eric Nixick, one of the best MMA coaches in the game, hands down. Yes, I said it, and I'll keep saying it. Today, we're going to go over, what, footwork drills? Yeah, we're going to do some uh, some cage control stuff out gotcha. of the open stance. Perfect, perfect. So who we have here? This is Puna Hele Soriano. Puna will be fighting uh, December 2nd, Austin, Texas. Perfect. All right, so let's take it away. Perfect. All right, guys, so here's one of our drills that Puna and I like to work on. Um, we have two different sides, we'll, we'll call it. One is the drop step side. The other side is a 45 degree angle. What we're looking for here is Puna not chasing the corner post. He's looking to cut off each corner post. So a nice little drill that we'll start off with is I'll have Puna throw just a straight one, two. And what I'll do is I'll try to beat his lead shoulder, right? Because we're always taught to get away from power. And believe me, when Puna hits you with power, you're gonna try to get away from it. So with that being said, Puna throws a one, two. I'm gonna move past his lead side and Puna's gonna do what we call a drop step. Puna drop steps and then he J steps right back in. As you can see, Puna still keeps his funnel keeping me straight in front of him rather than chasing this portion here. If he hits a one, two and tries to chase this shoulder, well, now I can start hitting him with my own shake steps or my own combinations. So Puna's gonna throw a nice one, two. He's gonna drop step. He's gonna J step his way back in and double jab cross. Now the next part of the drill will be me scooting back towards his rear hand. So when he hits his double jab cross, double jab cross, I'm gonna flow this way. Puna's gonna hit his 45, and then he's gonna double jab cross his way back in. And that's what gives us our restart. So remember, think about what we're trying to do is cut off the corner post here. Puna every time is gonna throw a hard one two. I move, he's gonna cut that corner post, reset, fight the corner post. Right? All the while, he's keeping me trapped on this barrier, keeping me funneled, but most importantly, he's never chasing after me. Cool. Uh, so let's say situational when start of a fight, right? What's the biggest thing that you're looking for for cage control overall? Obviously cutting off the cage. Um, is there anything that you want to tell the fighter Im immediately when the fight starts? Yeah. Hey, what do I say about ownership of the cage? <laughs> nice. Well, I, you know, I reiterate that with him. I, sure. I say that, like, we, we practice it, we say it, we preach it. Mm -hmm. but, you know, even in pads, I'm like, whose cage is it? And they'll say, my cage, motherfucker, it's gotcha. my cage. Like, gotcha. I, want, I want them to verbalize ownership, gotcha. right? We're planting a flag here, center mass. There's, mm -hmm. there's, there's fights where, especially when they're apex, you're gonna get a small, small cage mm -hmm. where geography is the priority. Sure. Owning your geography becomes the most important part of that fight, you know? Gotcha. You're two steps back, you're on the barrier. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. so important. And which really gives us a, a great advantage is having the same size cage as the apex in our True. gym. Yeah, yeah. So when guys are fighting the apex, when Paul Felder took the short notice against RDA, mm -hmm. I was like, yo, we're getting in this right now so you understand how close you are to the barriers. Very true. This is similar to almost like an, an amateur cage. Yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. And that's more so UFC. Yep, yep. Caliber, your, your, yeah. your uh, T-Mobile events. Gotcha. So with this drill, how many days a week are you? would you say a beginner should start to do this in, in like sets, reps, something like that? It's one thing to do it, it's other, another to understand it, gotcha. right? It's yep. like that, that scene in White Man Can't Jump, you yeah. listen to Jimmy or do you hear Jimmy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Are you listening yeah. to what he's saying? You're right? hearing me though. Right, exactly. You're hearing me. So just understand the ideologies behind it. And again, gotcha. like, ask questions, mm -hmm. ask questions. A coach should be able to explain to you the reasons why. Sure. Don't just say, do this because I said so. Mm -hmm. Say it because you, there's a reason behind it and help the athlete understand the reasons why. For sure. By doing so, it just gives them a little bit more validity. It gives them a better, better understanding. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, if you can take the cards in apart, you should be able to put it back together, right? For sure. So just ask questions and try to understand the, the points and the reasons why. Love it. So when you go to cut the cage off, mm -hmm. we're not in a position where when you remember when um, Stipe caught Verdum, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What happened? Verdum ran here, Stipe ran here, oh. walked right, right, right in that right hand. Yeah. Because his funnel went just like this. Yeah. And then he tried to cut this way. Yeah. Opposed to, I came here, you beat me, no problem. Oh, there's my reset. Yeah. Right? So all I did was simple, you beat my lead shoulder, mm -hmm. you beat my lead shoulder, I drop stepped, and I circled my way back. Gotcha. Very Makes simple sense. reset. Yeah. It's very simple. You know, a lot of people, because the ring in the cage is obviously totally different, the cage control, ring control, 
being able to cut off the ring is a lot easier, in my opinion, than yes. a cage. Yes, 100%. You know what I'm saying? 100%. Explain a little bit of the difference, because you work with guys in the ring back yes, in the day. Yes, yes. What's the difference there? Well, you have one big, big corner, one big angle. Yep. Right here, you have flat panel to a 45 degree, maybe a little bit wider, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're almost scraping off the panel. Yep. So for us, when we had Francis versus Tyson Fury, mm -hmm. a lot of our focus was to put Tyson Fury in the turnbuckles because mm -hmm. the angles were so tight. Yep. So if, if we were in a position where what we were trying to do was southpaw, uh, right? Because now uh, you're told to get away from my power mm -hmm. hand, which is where? Mm -hmm. Backside, back here, back here. right? So if I threw a, and you're stuck in a turnbuckle and I threw a one, two, which way are you going to go? I'm going to go this way. No. Oh, Away from my power. Oh, because you turn. Ah, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, right? Okay, okay, okay. So we put yeah, you in a you turn south pole. Correct. And you so we'll, we'll be south paw, back him up to the corner post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm Through a cross. Oh, shit. And then there was our step over. Yeah. So what we were trying right. to do was hide the weapon. The mechanism was our power hand was now yep, forward. Front up front mm. right so now it was like yo you probably wasn't ready for that at all right conventional right. boxer they're not used to that switching that's what we we're looking sense. for love it so we we're trying to mix our stances up a little bit yeah. play a little bit more to our mma appeal yep try to put him in a situation that he wasn't sure. accustomed to and just walk him right over to that position love it. Yep. Love it. all right so there you have it quick tips from a legend himself all right make sure you go ahead and check my man out where's your instagram at what's the uh eric underscore xc mma cool and youtube channel yeah same thing Cool, perfect. Yeah. Make sure you check him out. Trust me, you're not going to be disappointed. See you guys next time. Peace.